Okay, in this tutorial we're going to take another look at cycles and uh, the way I light my models or my scenes sometimes. There's all kinds of ways, but there's in the previous lesson I was using these small lights here to accent the scene, but what I had above as well was down in here I had this giant flat plane above. That's just a quick and easy way to put a light in the scene where I just want to do a quick test. But that's not very ideal. In fact, one of the reasons you can see if I go over here and from a distance, you can see the edges here like this. Actually makes kind of square edges. I'll move the light closer. But, but you still get corners. If you, you get certain angles, like back in here, you start seeing the edges of your light. So the shape of the light is a huge factor, you know, when it comes to illuminating the scene. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll forget this one. I'll just move this on to another layer. And in here, I'll just move my cursor to the center. And I'll add a sphere. And I'm just going to approximate a parabolic light for the moment. All right, I'll go into edit mode, get rid of all of those. Okay, so I have just this left. And then I'm going to move my, transform my origin to the geometry. I'm going to scale that up like this. And I'm going to use this as the basis of my new light for starters. But one thing we're going to look at before we use it is we're going to go take a look at the normals. So I'm going to bring up this window N, properties window, and I'm going to come, if you go into edit mode, then you can come down here and look at the normals right here. And there they are. Here's the, have the length set way up. And notice where the normals are facing. They're facing upward because that's the direction that that sphere was oriented when it was built. So now let's try and illuminate the scene first. So I'll turn this into a light emission. And there it is. Maybe I'll give it a color light. Maybe a little bit of blue like this. Well, the one thing you can already notice is that, you know, you don't have that squared edge like we did in here like that. So that softens the scene. That softens, softens those edges. So let me illuminate this just a little bit more. I'll just make it bigger. Move it away from the scene. And then I'll just come in here. So let me rotate it on Y180, RY180. All right. Now this actually does change things up a little bit because now you can imagine the light is coming outward at these angles versus being concentrated inward. And it really becomes obvious when you move it closer to the scene. Or in this case, I'll just be a little dramatic and I will actually raise it up. And you can see the light is more concentrated towards the center than it is out here at the edges. All right, let me rotate it again, RY180. All right, there's that versus, let me flip it, that, that, oops, that, facing straight down, or that, facing up. So this is the lighting model that I actually prefer to use because if you look at it, what it does, it concentrates if you think about the normals in here they're facing down so you have more light projecting down here but then as it gets higher up it's projecting further away so it's projecting out like that so it softens the lighting of the scene all right so now I'm going to take it and I'll move it away from the scene a little like this and one thing I'll do is I'll darken this light a little bit start adding a little more drama to it. All right, and then these other accent lights, you know, these are the lights. These are nicer for me than using a regular point light. But what is interesting about these is, you, of course, you have, the, there's a problem with these. A little bit of an issue that you have to work around is you can, you can see they're in the scene there. And if you have just a regular point light, it's just separated. But I like to direct my lights a little bit more like this is. But if they get in the way, some, sometimes you can try and fix it up like this so it doesn't render. You don't want your lights rendering in the scene. So you come up over here to this object button and you come down here to ray visibility. And it almost works. You turn off the camera and you turn off the light. But you still see some issues with here. So you got to work with it. But the way you work with it is by molding the shape of your light. So I'll spend a lot of time just working with my light shapes to illuminate my scene. 
you know and so and then you can see where that matters in you know like a art gallery where they have parabolic shaped lighting and things like that so all that really comes into consideration all right well that's the lesson for now and i'll see you in the next video